What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Emma's Bunker. Today, I am talking to Remy Casimir. Fuck me. I think I'm saying her last name wrong. We talk about in the episode the right way to say it. Shit. I respect her. I want to get that right. I hate, I hate it when I am saying someone's name wrong and I can, like, feel it. You know? Like, I just have a feel. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to bet Casimir. K-E-S-S-I-M-E-R. Oh, I'm sorry. That's how I spelled it. How it's actually spelled is K-A. Casimir. Okay, so I was spelling it wrong. And I'm going to leave this in here because because if you were going to spell it wrong, now we know how to spell it right. And, and it's a process, you know. It's a process. I was kind of nervous to ask her to... to um, be on the show. I don't know why. I've done her show. I had her I had her be on another podcast. You know? I was nervous. I was excited. Uh too. I don't know. It's like it, it was it was really fun and she she was really, really open about her background in terms of privilege. Like, you know, going to private school and pressure she was putting on herself around that and feeling depressed about having opportunities and that she shouldn't feel depressed and her internal struggle about that. And I respected that so much because I think that that, I think it is important to be as transparent as you can be. So people have context for who they are. So, so they know you so they can then choose that relation point. I love authenticity. You know, if you're authentic and coming from a good place, whatever it is, it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. And it was just interesting timing because, you know, I, I went to prep school too. It was, it was different. I, I mean, I went to a school for kids with learning disabilities, but if I wasn't dyslexic, I would have gone likely to another, I would have another prep school or I would have, and I would have had the opportunity and ability and support to do that. Uh, I'm saying my parents would have paid for it. And culturally in the family that I grew up in, that was kind of a, uh, a lot of people were doing that. And the more out in the world you are, the more like, you know, you see how classism and how gross a lot of that privilege is and the discrepancies there and how unfair it is. So I think people try to pretend that they're not associated with it. But it's important, you know, to say, I don't know, I, I appreciate the context. And we, we actually we talk about and I'm trying to be a good interviewer and not me talk too much, too, because I, I really want it. It's about showcasing them these people are amazing but we do you know she's a really good podcaster and and she was kind you know conversationalist i'm stuttering so much over myself but we were we were talking about a story about i was talking about how i got kicked out of the prep school and i was doing the context for it and i was talking about some mental health stuff and a suicide attempt and i'll touch more on that stuff later um (laughs) Do I know how to do an intro or do I know how to do a fucking intro? But it was interesting timing with the prep school stuff because I got a text message from this kid I went to, not elementary, but I went to public high school with. When I got kicked out of school, went back, went to the public high school in my town. And um, this kid and I were buddies. You know, we were friends. And and I'm from the middle of nowhere, guys. I'm from, I'm from Maine. I mean, rural Maine. I could just say Maine. I don't need to say rural Maine. Comedian in Boston, Lamont Price, has a joke. He goes, I'm from the racist, racist part of Boston, you know, fucking Boston. I'm from, like, rural Maine. And so, like, the kids you grew up around, every a lot of you were close. Because there's nothing to do, you know? You get close to people, and the only thing to do for amusement is, like, sit and, like, look at mud. You know? That's a bond. It's a weird bond, but that's a that's a bond. And this is one of the mud the mud looking kids. Him not mud looking, me and him go looking at mud, go off roading. You drive around and get mud all over yourselves, and then you like, I don't fucking know. I don't know. I truly don't know what you do. How do you how do you follow that? But he sent me this message. He said, You're hiding that you went you're hiding the fact that you went to prep school, that you were at prep school. If the people only knew. If the people, and I was like, if the, first of all, motherfucker, 
I was like, I went to a school for special ed kids that I got kicked out of. But I got the gist of what he was saying. I was also like, okay, you only think that people give a fuck because we're from such a small town. So literally by virtue of leaving that town, I was like, you made it. Whoa. You could go to, you could, if you're in a tiny town, you could go to New York City one time, you take a picture there and it's like, oh shit, this motherfucker's doing big things. Which, fair enough. It's hard to take a trip. But it was just interesting timing because I had gotten that text message and I was like, I'm not, you know, I'm not hiding nothing. There, I don't think, I don't know. I don't know. I hope this is all right to say. I'm just trying to, trying to give you guys context. And I want to hear your context. Email me, emmasbunker at gmail.com. I love hearing from you. Questions, topics you want me to go off on. Any questions you want me to ask guests I've had on in the past because I'll be having them on in the future. You know? Okay. Thank you for being here. Here's my conversation with my buddy, Remy. Make sure you check out her podcast. It's called How Come. C-U-M. Here it is. Today I'm talking with Remy, who I started introducing by saying, you are a fucking, but you are, I was supposed to say, you are, that is a professional. You are Thank a you. fucking professional Thank podcaster, you. comedian, yeah. yeah, actor. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. Are you considered a sex expert now too? Yeah. I mean, it depends like who, like personally, I still am like, no, they're like, I'm not that good at it. But um, well, you could be the sex expert, the sex expert, because someone could probably be a, someone can be like a trained sex expert, and then how they are at sex could be contingent on the partner. No, no, no. I think I think I'm I'm actually pretty okay at sex, and I think I I do give good advice, but I still like I I want people to not call me a sex expert because that's like a not what I signed up to do, and right. b like. There are so many other problems that people have that like I cannot fix, and I literally have to be like, go to a sex therapist or go to a therapist. You mean like that people write in with that just have yeah yeah because yeah, sex is definitely interwoven into everything else. Hundred percent. It's yeah. like I can tell you little tricks that have worked for other people, but like there are other reasons why you are the way that you are, and mm -hmm. I don't know those things. Right. Yeah. It's interesting that. It's interesting where people will look for advice, which I've been guilty of too. Like I'm asking everybody, my girlfriend pointed this out. She was, I'm asking everybody what they, what they know about the pandemic and when they think it's going to end. Mm -hmm. And it culminated when we, I went to the drive through the Starbucks as like a drive through and the woman asked me a question about my dog. And I was like, so we made small, the second someone gives me even kind of in, I'm like, how long do you think this is going to last? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, these people, why are you looking, where are you getting your basis of asking people for stuff. I'm like, but like, are you really asking them because you want to know, or you just want to talk to people about like ideas? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, or like, you're just I'm so lonely. starved for human contact. I literally, I'll make that's friends. True. That's I, a good point. Ben and I have been like, oh my God, we've become those people who wave. Like, oh, yeah. In the car, like if we see somebody <laughs> on the street, we're like, hey, like we're so just like, ooh. Hey. If I'm online at like the pharmacy, like I will make friends with the guy six feet ahead of me sure. and the guy six feet behind me. How's it going back there? Yeah. Where are you and Ben? Ben, your boyfriend. Ben, my boyfriend. Uh, also, Who's also more than your boyfriend. Comedian. Also comedian. Yeah. Also comedian. Absolutely. Um, you gotta say that even though Absolutely. he plugs me. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, <laughs> hey, relationships are complicated. My girlfriend called me a narcissist the other day, so it's tricky. I mean, at least she knows you. Like, <laughs> yeah, I felt like, so oh seen. Oh my god, you've been listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we are in Portland, Oregon, quarantined at his parents' family home. Oh, nice. And are his parents there? They're here. How's and it going? We have all of our meals together. And it is, I mean, they are the most lovely people in the entire world, but I'm not polite. Like Really? I, no, like I'm just such like a shitty human and that's why like I mostly keep to myself so I can't like offend other people. I'm so shocked that you're not polite. You seem, you. I, I always think you have like, like very like socially lubricated, like good manners. Really? Okay, yeah. That's nice. I the reason I, I even was like, you're a fucking professional. I mean, that was really considerate. You asked if you wanted to send, because we're doing this over Zoom. You said, can I send you a link? Very courteous. I mean, I'm obsessed with manners. you. Oh, wow. Like. 
but like, yeah, like I, I literally reached for something with my hand last night, like a raspberry. And I was like, Oh, don't do that. Here's and the deal. like table yeah. manners are tough. I personally, that's like a personal thing of mine. I ate a yeah. lot alone a lot as a kid. That's yeah. what I've traced it back to. I was always by myself growing up. So it's usually not meaning to be rude. It's probably, did you eat a lot of meals by yourself? Yeah. And I still do. I yeah. do. And, and when I was younger, like for some reason, like I just didn't respect my mom <laughs> and she's the one who like taught me all those things. And I would be like, are table manners important or are they important to you, Robin? Mm-hmm. You know, like, and now I'm like, no, I think they're important. How are, how did his, how are his parents reacting to you? They think I'm adorable. Like they think I'm like the funniest little thing, but there are things that I'll say sometimes that like I'll see in their face that like, they're like, why did she say that? Like, why did she feel the need to express that opinion? Also, we're cooped up. Yeah. So who knows what's what? Yeah. No, because every day I ask him, I'm like, have they said anything? Do they hate me? And he's like, no, they like you more than me. Like, stop. <laughs> have you guys been getting in any squabbles? Yeah. Yeah. Me, yeah. me too. Lots a of lot. squabbles. Yeah. I'm not I'd usually love, a squabbler. I'd love to hear about yours because oh. that'll make me feel normal. Okay, I hope this. So the the squabble I would say is a cumul, cumulative squabble that probably would have come up if it weren't for Corona. Mm-hmm. And thanks for asking too. I appreciate it. It, but th- okay, the squabble is it's all been little things circling around. Uh, that. <sighs> Uh, these are squabbles. So the, the, this is the, the squabbles leading to a main, like a main event. These sure. are the little squabbles. Of course. Um, there's I'm little not- wrestles and then there's WrestleMania. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it did lean up to WrestleMania. The yeah. little squabbles are usually about me being messy. And then mm-hmm. I was trying to be cleaner. And then, then, so the first squabble I picked where I had put the cheat, I organized a refrigerator first time ever. I put the sour cream somewhere. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't give a fuck where anything goes. I could give two flying fucks. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Mm-hmm. She put the sour cream somewhere else. As a joke, I said, oh, you put it in the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because some, then somehow we started squabbling. Now, she's not an arguer at all. We started bickering mm-hmm. about the cheese. Me bickering about it more. Because I was like, well, you always get mad at me for being messy. And then you put what, the cheese. you called sour cream cheese? <laughs> yes, that which I guess was wrong. I didn't know. And also she was like, but you didn't put it in the right place. So then okay. where do you put the sour cream? So th- then it starts being like lots of picking about you do this, you do this. But the main WrestleMania arguments turned into, she said she had, had like one or two glasses of wine and she said I had narcissistic tendencies. And I was like, tell me about that. Do I, I want to know. I know mm-hmm. I talk about myself a lot. I'm very self-involved. Tell me more about me. Go <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, give me all the details. Go off queen. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I really wanted to know. And then that turned into, and then she, I haven't been, I haven't really dropped it. This happened two days ago. I was like, I want to know. I want to change if I am. Mm-hmm. Took a quiz online. Results pending. Okay. Does that make you feel more normal? Or what are you guys squabbling about? I mean, that's like, <sighs> No, ours are like not okay. Um, so I don't know if, if you know this, but I built a cl- comedy club in Ben's room because the second I like found out that we weren't going to be performing again, I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm going to take this to Instagram live comedy. Sure. And, and I have a question. Have you always been entrepreneurial? Yeah, always. So even as a little kid, you were like- Had a lemonade like a- stand. Like, Yeah. I got into comedy because I was starting a company and I needed to do a Kickstarter for it. So I was like, I'll take improv classes. I love it. Like, yeah. What was the Um, company? It was called The Tuck. It's an attachable leather belt loop that you can slip on your belt in case your belt is too floppy and you don't want to get it shortened. It just, and it's reversible. So they're like brown and black. You know, I got into comedy. I tried to invent something too. Really? Yeah. Yourself? Called Stop the Scuff which is oh. a clear plastic material that goes on the bottom of your pants to prevent them from scuffing. You have it on. I can't see it. You can't feel it. Wait, so Amazing. your idea. Thank you. It didn't go any, it, it blew. I've sent it to a scam developer. So your mm-hmm. idea. How I sent mine to a scam developer as well. And then it like, I didn't have the thing for a year. And then I like gave up. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a comic now. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what happened wild. to me too. That, that's what happened wild. to me too. I sent to a scam developer and I was depressed. I went to a party and someone's doing comedy. I took a class. Mm-hmm. Wait, so you tried to invent, uh, I'm going to tab to remember to get this into the, 
Into the fight, yeah. In oh, I'll fight. tell you. I'm dying okay. to tell you about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm itching here. But you yeah. tried to invent that. Mm-hmm. And then, to, so when you tried to invent it, did I you- did invent it. I like, I had, I, so I, I put it on Kickstarter because I wanted yep. to raise 30K to like get the first round of funding. And how'd you know to do that? Um, Cause like, at, well, oh, this is another thing about me. Uh, I become whoever I'm dating. And my boyfriend oh, at the time was in startups and like, I already wanted to do it. And I saw like a lot of people at the time were doing Kickstarters to start companies and I didn't want to take money from my parents because like my older brother had done that for his company that failed and so I did what was his company it was called adverts for autos and it was matching up advertisers with people who drove so they would pay them to like have their ad on the side of the car it's a really great idea yeah it's a good idea but he started it like too slowly and then a bunch of other scam companies popped up were doing right. the same thing and then his wasn't going to work fuck but, but he tried yeah. but that's yeah but he tried parents lost money but yeah, but a bunch of people were doing Kickstarters and I was like, I can do that. And uh, I'd also taken acting in college and I was like, I could either pay an actor or I could go back to improv and like do it myself. Sure. Yeah, and then like I just had the video. so much fun doing improv that I was like, fuck business. <laughs> I'm funny and, now. And you make yourself the product. Exactly. Kind and of. what happened was I finally got like the permission from other people that said like I could do comedy because mm. people would write me being like, yeah, the product's really good, but like you're hilarious in that commercial. Huh. I'm like, the writing's good. Wait, where's the commercial? Can I find it online? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. What, so the, what is the product called? The Tuck. The Tuck. Were you yeah. so fucking pumped when you came up with that name? Yeah, and I called myself the Mother Tucker and I like thought that was really great. And <laughs> yeah. When I, the name that I had was Stop the Scuff and I was so- I love I, Stop the Scuff. I like was going to MIT Young Inventors meetings. I put an ad, is that Ben? Yeah. Hi, Ben. I put an ad on- Emma. How you doing? Oh, hi, Emma. What's up? Look, you guys have a green screen in the I back. I can't hear you, but oh, I right, sorry, see sorry, sorry. you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh, so you, that's, is that the comedy club back there? The comedy club's over here. Look at that. Okay, wow. And then Ben's green screen studios over Good there. Good for you guys. I mean, that's nice. We're, we're, that's the hustle. We're both Virgos, so we just like love like creating and like I don't know. I, are Virgos Being usually weird. entrepreneurial? They must be. Yeah, I don't know a ton about. I'm a Sagittarius, and I know a lot about Tauruses. I don't know a ton of. I've never dated a. Virgo. I love Sagges. I think really? I've actually told you this before. Mm. Here. Um. Sages don't believe in astrology. What? Um, most because I fucking believe. Mm-hmm. Which is like so rare. But I, also I had a like- friend that was a Sag. She believed too. But we're both oh, on the cusp, so maybe that changes it. Or maybe it's like Sag women, but mm. Sag men never believe in astrology. Mm. And Sages also have like verbal diarrhea, so yeah. like you really know them if you know them. Right. It's awesome. True. Yeah, I share a lot. Except for sometimes when I'm in a relationship, I don't. Mm-hmm. But mm. yeah. So you, so you go to invent you can, thing. You can fuck me, but you'll never know me. That's what I should put on my gravestone. Yeah. But I, but, but while well, usually in the beginning, I'm usually, that was one thing I saw that nurses do too. They're very charming in the beginning of relationships. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you go to invent something. Do you, when you invented that, did you have other ideas that you tried to invent before that? Yeah, I still have um, an app that I want to build, um, but I'm waiting till weed is like totally legal, mm. but it's called Sesh. And you just put everybody that like you're friends with that, you know, smokes in like a friend list and you say you're down or you're not down. Smart. And then it can guide you to your friend's house. Yeah. And let you know before they arrive. So you're not like, what? Who's here? Right. Because you're high. Right. And you yeah. could have snacks, like snack delivery. Mm-hmm. They could have like coupons. Like you are mm-hmm. five feet from a burrito. I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna smoke at Tim's house. So many collabs. Yeah, that's smart. Mm-hmm. Did you did you go to school for business? No, I initial I was going. I was trying to get into the business school at my college, Where'd and you I had a break at Boston University. Great school. I, great school. And I had such a breakdown. I told my parents I was going to drink Drano if they didn't let me drop out of the class. And they were like, oh my God, fine, drop out, do art history or something. And I was like, okay, thank God. Well, what prompted the breakdown? Everything was group based. 
like and group project based. Yeah. And I don't work well with other people. And like, I don't want my, or that's not true. I don't work well with other people if I don't care about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And if I don't like the people and I didn't like the people, I found that they were really lazy. And I was like, wait, all of my shit is going to be dependent on you guys. I hate that. Totally. Cause you're like, now I also have to motivate you. And that's why I stopped doing improv too, kind of, because I wasn't like, after a show, I was like, did I do a good job or did the team do a good job? Right. Or did I do a bad job or did a team do a bad job? And like with stand up, there's no question. It's like, right. You right. That was you. <laughs> yeah. I fucked up. No, I fucked up. I get that totally. So you said you're going to drink the Drano, but if you go into Boston university, that means you must've had good grades in high school. I went to like a prep, uh, like a New York city private prep school. Nice. So like, BU was, is good for like the average person, but like, according to my friends, I was a failure. Really? Yeah. So that's what, that's like growing up in a bubble. And even still, like being a comic is not like impressive to well, the people the, I grew up with. What are they with. doing? They're also, I relate mil- to millionaires. That. Like, they're like, I don't know, the heirs of fortunes already and like decided to like go into that business or right. they're like heading up finance or they're the, or they, Yeah. Are they happy? I don't care. Because if they're probably not, I, I, I would feel- If they're like, happy, that's cool, but I couldn't be happy doing a, a nine are. to five. And yeah, yeah. Who knows? I bet they're not. Yeah. I bet they're not. You know, I mean, or maybe they are. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it's so, such a comedian response though, to be like, I bet they're miserable yeah, too. Yeah, fuck hating. Like yeah, every I'm, time Ben and I see another couple, he's like, I bet they're both fucking people on the side. And I'm like, you can't just say that just to make us feel better about themselves, like ourselves. Right. Do you, when I watched 90 Day, me and my girlfriend started watching tons of 90 Day Fiance. And I was like, when we argue more, we watch this more because we bond over them. Yeah. And I'm like, well, at least I'm not Big Ed, you know, even though I like Big Ed. I feel like a lot of girls watch Bravo because it's like, well, we can talk about their fights instead of ours. (laughs) Totally. And you can like fight vicariously through them. Mm -hmm. Like, what'd you think about how they did that? Like, they didn't do that. You did that. Wow. You did that. Yeah. How, how would you feel if they, if they did that? So you, when you tried to invent it, were you like crushed when the product didn't work out? No, I was kind of relieved because mm. I like, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to be in manufacturing. That's not right. like <laughs> my, like my goal in life. Like uh, the most fun I had with it was making the commercial right. and like shooting that shit. And like, I just think it, I'm glad I had that quote unquote failure because it led me to something else. Sure. What happened like with the, what happened better. with the 30 grand that was raised? Oh, I still have 11,000 belt loops in a warehouse in Queens. In that, Queens? Yep. So you were that's you were doing an American business. No, it was Chinese business. Oh. But then we got them all shipped to this warehouse in Queens. You got to start moving those belt loops. It's no, but it's my, my dad's friend. And so he's just kept them for their free for life. I will stop entertainment right now and dedicate myself for a month to selling belt loops at a fucking stand. Every comic says over. this who finds out about it and like, let's Walk do in it. on the belt loops. Let's do it. The Why not? It's good. It still holds up. And is this for all sizes? Yeah. Everyone needs a fucking yes. loop. Yes. Well, it's not like, think about it. It's not people sizes. It's belts and belts only go from so thin to so fat. Right. Right. How was your boyfriend at the time? Was he supportive when you were doing that? He was very supportive. Good. Yeah, very supportive. But he knew that my ultimate dream was comedy. And he would always be like, you, like this is what you're doing. Like, you should go into comedy. And I'd be like, nah. And then, and then sometimes I go, okay, yeah, maybe I'll try acting. And he goes, well, no, not acting, because then you might make out with other people. Oh, my God. But it's acting. But it's acting. What is it? it? Yeah, true. No, it's an excuse. Um, Actually, I get that because I had to do, I had this, like, I had an audition where there was a sex scene and I was like, man, I hope it's not like a, the way the sex scene was, I was like, ah, I hope it's not like me with some big, like, butch person. And my mm-hmm. girlfriend was like, but it's acting. And I was like, yeah, I know, but I wouldn't, I actually wouldn't do it. I'd still like to enjoy myself. And she was like, you wouldn't do it. And I was like, no, I don't think I would do it. I don't want to be seen like that. Mm. And she was kind of like, but mm. it's acting. So you're saying you would enjoy it with, and I was like, no, 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 no. But in my head, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that yeah, would yeah. be a beautiful, maybe, 
I don't know, maybe everything is a lead up to that monogamy isn't, that monogamy is t- really tough. It's really tough. It's really tough. Um, so, you, and your fight. So you guys had, so you guys yeah. got in your, so you guys. So the fight. Yeah. Okay. So there are two camps of con, or, okay, let me roll back. So he's super supportive about, I'm like, I'm going to do this live comedy thing. I think it's going to be really fun. He wasn't so into it. Like a lot of comics are like, it's not the same. You're like right? ruining comedy and nah, 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 whatever. He was kind of on that camp of like, I'm never going to do this, but okay. like, go for it. Which and I understand because it is scary. I get it. It is it's, scary. It's so daunting and it's very vulnerable. Yes. Um, and, I'm, and no one's saying it's the same, but the first show went really well. And so I was like, oh my God, like, I'm going to make this a real thing. And so him and I went to Michael's. He helped me buy all like the wallpaper and the sh- shit and the glue and putting it all together and like really, really helped out and kind of swallowed that this isn't going to work thing for like a second. Right. Or, you know, more than a second. And I was like really excited. And then I had the next show and it was like, there was like 6,000 viewers and it was like awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I I mean, granted it was because Ashley Heseltine was on and like her fans are rabid. Awesome. still they were there. And your Wi-Fi was cranking. And my Wi-Fi was working. And like his, his parents were proud of me and I was getting all this like great feedback. And like somebody from Time Magazine called me and was like, I want to do an expose on people, you know, or creatives like doing their things at home great and I felt so supported and it was so great and then that night we go out to we're not supposed to go out but we'd already been in contact with his friend Sam before quarantine like shut down and Sam's been quarantined alone and we were like let's go have some drinks with Sam we'll stay six feet from him in the house and we go to his house Ben gets wasted like I haven't seen since we were in New York because like in front of his parents, he's been keeping it in check. Sure. This was like, he gets so drunk, does so much cocaine. Oh no. Uh, Cause Sam had, yeah. And usually when that happens, I'm like, I don't like drunk you. I don't like the shit that's about to come out of your mouth. Like I just know what's going to happen. So I'm going to go home. Also the and thing I- with drinking and doing cocaine in a, like when you, someone's drinking and doing cocaine in New York, it usually implies lots of walking around or going, if you're drinking mm-hmm. and doing cocaine in a rural area, which, mm-hmm. or you're quarantined, it's a different energy. It's mm-hmm. a more, I don't know if that was the case, but I could imagine a more bottled up. It's, it's super bottled up. And it's like, especially when it's just me, him and like one guy friend, like they're probably going to say some shit that bothers me that they <laughs> think is funny. And I think is problematic. And like, right. we shouldn't be having that discussion at three in the morning. That'd be a good show. Just like a tick down to the problematic, like mm-hmm. <laughs> you said native American or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. No, no, no. They said Indian. No. Uh, right. right. India. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. See, yeah. I, I fail. Wait, you're supposed to say native American or Indian. No, you're supposed to say native American. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. No, like you were oh, yeah. right. <laughs> um, Full respect. But yeah, so I was like, I know this, I'm getting out of here. Uh, I, and he was like, all right, yeah, take my car. Um, I'll see you when I see you. Like Sam will drive me home. I get home at probably like midnight at six in the morning. <laughs> I wake up to Ben sitting on the corner of this bed, peeing on my club and the carpet, his get own the carpet. Get fuck out of here peeing on my club. Wow. And I woke up and I, I was like, are you fucking kidding? And he goes, what? I go, you're peeing on my club. And he turns around and he goes, I know. Ooh. And I was like, you know? You and monster. But he is adorable. I will add. Oh, he's the cutest he's person in the entire, he yeah, can get away so with murder. Yeah. Cause for some reason with him, it doesn't, since I know his face and I think he's funny and nice guy. Don't picture an evilness. You picture a, Because he's, yeah. And like, but But I'm like, sure if it was my club, I'd be like, what the fuck? Coked out, drunk, evil Ben. Like, well, he, it's not even that he usually gets evil. It's just like he does, he does and says whatever he wants. And like, he doesn't care. And usually right. in the morning, he'll be like, I'm so embarrassed. But, um, that sounds so like he an says, So person, he goes, but it's, he goes, he's not. I know. <laughs> yeah, he I goes, know. I know. I know. And then I was like, I knew you didn't like this club. And he's like, I don't like internet comedy, <laughs> you know, like whatever. And I was like, 
well, fuck you. You have to like be supportive and uh, whatever. And then he goes into the bathroom and starts throwing up so loudly, mm. like, cause he was that fucked up. Right. Um, turns on the shower to muffle the throwing up, I guess. Uh, turns on the smoke alarm by accident, wakes up his entire house. Oh. Like, and it's just like this whole thing of like in the morning. What was it? Like a Wednesday, Thursday? Who knows? Who knows? Days aren't quarantined. things anymore. Yeah. yeah. You're quarantined. It's a random day where nothing should be happening. Mm-hmm. And yet. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but then I wake up in the morning and he's also left a shit for me in the toilet. Like, and then I threw up just from looking at it. Like it was like not cool. And like, oh, that wasn't God. even, that wasn't even the fight. The, the fight is like in the morning, like everyone, like his parents are just like, oh, you were sick last night. And like, like <clears throat> I can't tell them what has actually transpired. Right. But yeah, you know what happens when you and drink a bunch and they're like, like, what? So nobody understands like why Remy's upset. Right. And then like, I just look crazy. Right. And like, like, why are you mad at him for getting sick? Why aren't you mad at him? And then like, there'll be sometimes that like, I'll say, uh, like before I was saying like, I'll say things at dinner and he's like, why would you say that or whatever? Mm. And I'm like, I can't say that shit to you. Like, I have to keep this amazing image of you up. Nice of you. That's called, I don't know. Is there a name for a wingman to someone's parents? You're not a wingman. You're an assister. PR person. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing it. That's nice. Cause if someone says something, Cause I've had people bond over me being ridiculous with my yeah. mom yeah. and I'm always like, you know, yeah. Let's, and that's a tactic. It's that's a tactic. Usually, I get it. It's like, going in oh, for the get- look how cute we both are that we get annoyed by Emma. Like, oh, Emma. And I'm like, all right, yeah. you get one or two of those a week, but more than that, mm-hmm. back off. Yeah. And so I feel like I look like the really rude or annoying one. Right. And I'm just like, like, well, at least I'm being honest about what I do. Right. Did you make up about, did you guys make up? Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. And, and I think like he's eaten his words about internet comedy not working. Cause like, I get it. It's right. not, you, you think I'm happy not performing live? No, but I'm trying to find another alternative and it's making other people happy and it's keeping other comics writing their jokes. Yeah, I haven't been Which writing is cool. at all, actually. Yeah, you should I, write more. Yeah, I know. I haven't been writing at all since this has happened. I was working mm-hmm. on, like, writing a script. But I haven't really been... No, I haven't been writing. It's uninspiring, day. kind of. Like, yeah. being indoors all day and trying to write a script. Because you're like, what do people do? Yeah, I started, like, going way back into the archives of actually it's funny you mentioned the manners because i started like doing documenting me trying to learn fucking manners Mm -hmm. because i've had so many like i've had in the beginning of relationships and everything but towards the end people be like what are you because i'll be like eating with my hands like Mm -hmm. just a fucking food is everywhere i made pancakes the other day and my girl that was a that was a fight because i was like Mm -hmm. don't come in here while i'm cooking Mm -hmm. you don't want to see what's going on here and then she came in and started cleaning while I was doing it. And then she was like, why is there pancake batter on the ceiling? And I was like, these are good questions, but there's no reason for us to have this fight. And mm-hmm. then there was pancake <laughs> batter. Like weeks later, we were finding pancake batter like under the table. So I've been Sorry. trying to get less messy, I tried to do something nice for you. Yeah, but that's kidding. the other thing is I'm seeing like how useless I am during this quarantine. Like he does everything for me. He makes dinner like five nights a week. Oh, that's nice. And I like, he does all the cleaning. Like- I, we were like FaceTiming with my friend and she was like, oh, do they, your parents make you do chores? And he was like, no, but like, I do this, 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 this. And like, just cause. And she's like, oh, you're such a good kid. And she's like, Remy, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't know, eat. Back off, yeah, back off, I'm starving. <laughs> was it, is it very I'm different? I'm useless. Cause also it's probably very different. Are you guys in more of the country? We're in the suburbs. We're like in a cul-de-sac. Yeah. But you grew up in Manhattan. Yeah. So it's very, that's, those are very, very different things. 
Yeah. His parents keep being like, do your parents know what your way of life is like here? And I'm like, yes, they think it's crazy. (laughs) They think you guys are fucking nuts at the twilight zone. I told them about composting and their minds were blown. Like (laughs) you, what is that? Do they ask you questions about the, the how come podcast? No, Hmm. they like, um, we made something really cool on the website and I, I was really proud of it and I wanted to tell them about it. But then as I was like getting into it, I was like, so do you know how I have a podcast um, about orgasms? And his dad was like, um, yes, I've heard that. Oh. 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 There, um, you know, I was thinking about with orgasms too. Mm-hmm. Cause when I was reading back in the bio and I know you probably getting, you must get, so many things are probably focused on sex now because of it. Oh, yes. But I think if I hadn't had an orgasm until I was 28, I think it, I would have had a lot better relationships, to be honest, because I mm-hmm. wouldn't, I'm, maybe I'm romanticizing it, but I don't think I would have been looped up in the sex. I would have just focused on if the partner was a good partner in other areas. Cause some, oh, and, oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, yeah. sometimes it used to be like, if I had a good sexual connection with someone, I could bang out a year, no pun intended, uh-huh. of a awesome. relationship. Oxytocin is um, a motherfucker of a hormone and it is released when we have sex and, and even more when we have orgasms and right. it makes us think that we're in love. Right. But and we're I, not. And it's, it's actually only um, vulva owners that experience that. Why Guys, is that? I don't know. I think God is a horrible person. If okay. he ex- <laughs> no, um, but uh, like, yeah, I don't know. It's unfair that like, when I was single, I would fall in love every time and they right. would never like me. Even if you um, weren't having an orgasm, you're still having it? Yeah. It, like right. sexual connection does that to us. Yes. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that sex like is a nice band-aid for like horrible relationships oh, yeah. and can keep you in them for like so much longer. Totally. That's yeah. why I was like, man, if I hadn't been having sex until 28, mm-hmm. oh, there's there's a lot of relationships that would have been chopped down big time. Have like, you seen that new show on Netflix, Too Hot to Handle? No. Oh my I've God. heard of it. I good? just started watching it last night. It is so addictive. I don't know if it's good yet, but it's it's Is it's it all trash. hot people? Yeah. And their whole thing is that they're not allowed to have sex. They're not allowed to make out. And if right. they do, they lose the house money every time they do. Mm. And it's supposed to be trying to like teach them better relationship practices. So like, we'll see, you know, if like hormones get out of the way, like, can you actually get to know somebody and like know their middle name before you fuck them? Right. Can they talk about sex? Yeah. So that's pretty erotic because they can be like, because mm-hmm. I actually love, that's why I thought if sometimes if people are, like that's a thing with if someone's into kink stuff more like then you that is you can have parameters of sexual conversations because they're more likely to be mm-hmm. like what are you into and then you're like oh i have this whole area of words to be like yeah, this, that, yeah, this, yeah, that. yeah. there's also it- like the um when i went on birthright i was on an orthodox jewish trip i was and- gonna ask if you're jewish but because yeah, kissimer yeah, yeah. is a jewish last name Casimir. 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 Jewish. Casimir. I don't know why I just pronounced it wrong. It's Casimir. Casimir. <laughs> okay. I have a, such a hard time pronouncing it. No, every it's now fine. and then, every now and then, it's the dyslexia. It happens. This I is know. when it happens. I'm sure it happens to other people pronounce it wrong. This is when it happens. Every now and then, it happens with Jewish names. Mm. It also happens, I found, with Kenyan mm. names, mm. Ethiopian names, Korean mm. names. Look at you with so many friends. <sighs> Well, this is because I'll notice it, especially, yeah, the, the, with a sample of like one from each, but mm-hmm. I noticed it because I was like, okay, I know, I know, I don't want to seem racist mm-hmm. when I'm messing up the name. Mm-hmm. So with Jewish people, I get a little bit more of a slide. Usually they're more like, right. it's Greenberg. And I'm like, oh, Greenberg. <laughs> okay, I can get that one. But yeah, Casimir is like, we think it's like Polish or something. Okay. Like, I don't, but um is Remy Jewish? No, Remy's French. Okay. Remy's a French boy's name. My mom okay. was just like reading a wine journal when she was pregnant and was like, hmm, that man That's who fine. owns a vineyard has an interesting name. Um and here so you yeah. Are. Uh here I am. French boy. French boy. French Jewish boy. I, I want like to... a French Jewish boy right now. I know I like that shirt very much. Thank I like you. it very much. Thank you. I got in the boys section. I used to do that all the time. I used to go shopping in the boys section. It's my thing. 
Um, wait, to, what was I going to tell you? Before, oh, wait, you were, there was something you were going to tell me. And I want to ask you about your first about your first date. Um, oh yeah, I, we have. To I've run out of my goddamn date. ADD pills. And I, I know. know if, and I don't know if I'm going to get more or not because I am in Louisiana quarantining at my girlfriend's house. Ugh. I don't want to go anywhere. Wait, she lives in Louisiana? So here's what happened. So she has a house here that she rents out on Airbnb. Mm. And everybody canceled Airbnb because of Corona. Mm. So we were in LA and then we But came. you're like, let's go make use of a full house. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But my parents are like real pissed at me. We've been quarantined. We have been quarantining. We've Why been are they mad at you? My dad is beside himself, his words. Because Why? um, just I guess because we drove for two days. We were really safe. He's a That's, warrior. You didn't fly. Didn't fly. You didn't stay anywhere. Mm -mm. That's great. I slept in the car. Actually, there was one time after we woke up in the car. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, I'm not mentally stable enough to be in a relationship right now. So little things like that have been popping up. That's you know. tough. Yeah. yeah. I'd never yeah. slept in a car before. And I then I woke up, I said, I don't think I'm in a good place for this. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, no, I've, I've been telling Ben like more outwardly when I'm like depressed because I'm like, uh, I'm not in a good place. And I think I don't know if I hate you or if I'm just like really sad, yeah. but like, I'm not, I'm like, a, you need to get the fuck away from me. And like, I can't like. How are you around your period? I've had two periods during quarantine and, it, and it's every time I am a monster and then I start bleeding and I go, this is why. Yeah. But like, you yeah. You get depressed or just angry? I mean, I, I get so depressed and, but like, I that's do. just like general me is like a very sad person. Yeah. Why is that? Is it biology? Is it, you think Chemicals. it's biological? Yeah. It's gotta be biological because I've been given everything. Right. Right. It sucks. Like I'm literally so my, my, whenever I tell my dad like about it, he gets so mad at me mm. and he's like, you literally had the perfect life. And I'm like, do you think that that doesn't weigh on me? Right. Like I wish that I was better. Right. You know, like I know how much you put into me and how disappointing I must be. Like I disappoint me together? every day. No. No. Okay. But recently. They're mm -hmm. like separated two years ago. Oh wow. Yeah. And like to the point that my best friend reached out to me the other day and he was like, Who is that in the picture with your mom? And I was like, her boyfriend. And he was like, Your mom has a boyfriend? When like when did your parents split up? And I'm like, I don't really do like I guess I just haven't told anyone about it. I get that. For some reason I thought your parents were well cuz you were with your grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. I mean getting a it's nice I mean I thought your parents were dead. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Yeah. I didn't I but I'm glad to hear they're both kicking. They're both kicking. They're both kicking. Were yeah. you would you get depressed as a kid? Yes. Take pills? Would you, would you take pills? I, I didn't take pills. But like, my dad is like, he's a doctor, but he didn't believe, he doesn't believe, or he's getting more into like the fact that mental health is a thing too. What kind but of doctor? Like, he's a dermatologist. Ooh, oh, yeah. what a nice fucking, now that's what, that's what I want my niece to be. That's a good job and you're not in the ER. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he would be like, I don't get it. Like, why are, and I'm like, dad, I've been depressed this whole time. Like, do you right. remember when I was like three and I would cry and scream, I want to go home while being at home. I'm like, that's depression. Right. Like that's psychotic. Um, and Did they send yeah. you a therapist when you were a little kid? Mm, I, I think I only went to my first therapist at like 11 and it was Pretty because young. they, they were having marriage problems. My parents did that with me too. We had to go yeah. to a therapist when they were having marriage problems. And yeah. then it came out that one of those therapists was like a child molester or something. Uh, oh my God. I just learned that my sixth grade teacher was just um, arrested for child porn Fuck. and assault. Fuck. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. And then you look back and you're like, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I always thought he was creepy. Really? Yeah. Fucking and he a. was. He was one of the teachers with like a kid at the school and like it was just, just like, a weirdo. Yeah. Did you take any pills now? Yeah, I'm on Lexapro. I used to take that. I like it. 
I used to take, I don't know, I'm, now I take Wellbutrin and Zoloft, but I forget to take my pills and I take my, my ADD pills. Those are the ones yeah. that I run out of. Yeah. That's the whole thing with like people with mental illness is like, we forget to take our medicine. And like every time I take it regularly, I start, I'm like, oh, look how good I am. I'm like, I don't need pills. This is me. And it's like, no, it's not. Yeah. Take those You're fucking on pills. Meds. Yeah. yeah. When I Wait. get depressed, my girlfriend will be like, did you take your pills today? And I'll be like, no, I didn't. But that has yeah. nothing to do with it. It's and then I'll take business. my pills and be like, fuck, this is scary that this is what is like holding everything together is the goddamn well Wait, I need to plug in my computer. I'll be right. Um, different lengths in different states. Um, I think that most will be lifted in June, except for the hot spots, which probably should go through October. You think it through October? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think New York is going to be a long fucking time. Mm-hmm. I miss New York a lot. I think LA Me too. too. I mean, that's what one thing that's fucking nuts in the South. Like Atlanta is being lifted, and it's a different vibe here. That's part of why my parents are flipping out because it's mm-hmm. it's it's it is different. Like I don't at the gas station right. people aren't wearing gloves and masks. Like it's they like don't give a fuck. Yeah, I I wrote a joke and like it was a joke, but like I I feel this way. That's like if you want to go out fucking go out kiss people spit in each other's mouths i don't care but also sign something that says you're not going to use the hospital yes if you want to be like this brazen cool risk your own life absolutely don't put it on healthcare workers that are going to end up having to take care of you yeah you stupid selfish and i'm not saying everybody who like people want to work because they want to make money i get it it's like fucking horrible but like the worst thing that could happen is that another resurgence happens. Right. And then we have to do this again and it just undoes everything. And like, I I made this analogy on my podcast, but like when I was a senior in high school, I cut my leg open by accident. I got stitches, but because it was prom that week, I went running around Mm. and now I have a massive vagina looking scar Mm. on my thigh. Mm. Don't get a massive vagina looking scar. <laughs> Stay home for a week or however long it Can you takes trademark to heal. that? Yes. Don't get a massive vagina scar. Just stay home. Like, that's, wait it's a good. minute. That's my new merch. Yeah, yeah. Please, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be very like curious to see because, I mean, LA is in good hands, but I have shows in June that haven't been canceled. Hmm. And I, I don't know. I mean, I... Uh, I don't know. We'll see. But I, it makes this this makes me miss New York. It's I miss New York. To, yeah, I miss New York a lot. But I don't think I think I think what's funny, kind of, which is like you know how New Yorkers were always bragging about like, haha, we're the center of everything. Yeah. Like this is the place. Like I think it's gonna become not the place for you like so? a year. I yeah. wonder. I wonder because like it's it it's the most cases. So right. like if if clubs start opening up that it's going to be like the last thing. The last. They're not Talk like, about not needed. Not needed at all. And from a, from a physical standpoint. Right. From like a, you can survive perspective. Um, but also like when they open up, they'll have to have social distancing. So like six feet between each patron, which is like, how is the club going to even function right, on that right. much money? Right. Um, so I don't remember who it was, but some comic was like, oh, if you want to get on stage, just go to the places where the bands have been lifted and you can perform on those stages. Like, you'll get sick. Right. But, like, you will be able to perform. If you need to do it. If you need to. Or you could just come to my internet club, and I promise you, it is fun. Do you feel like comedy has helped or made you help depression or hurt it? Because now, for me, comedy is a trick. You feel like it's helped? The only thing is, so what sucks for me about, like, I've liked doing other people's internet shows, especially, like, Zoom ones, because you can Mm -hmm. hear the laughs, and, like, that's amazing, but for mine, it's, like, I do all the laughing and the laugh tracks for other people. Oh, wow. So they can try out new material. Good for you. They have, yeah, it's been, like, the audience is having a great time, and the comics are having a great time, but I haven't been able to try new shit, because I'm so focused on, like, is this person in the room yet? Do I play a laugh after my joke? Like You're producing. 
I'm producing. Yeah. You're doing the laugh track? I do a laugh track. I do claps. I do oohs and ah. <gasps> mm-hmm. Do you, how do you keep the, do you just know everyone's material well enough to do that? Or you got, you're like, I'm getting a vibe. Boo. I mean, most, ha, ha, ha. most of the people, but like, yeah, like most of the people I ask to do it, I'm like, I know your cadence of jokes. Right. Um, so I won't step on your shit. But then other ones, it's like, I think I just know the cadence of jokes at this point. You're producing. Yeah. That's one thing with comedy that does, it does, you can translate it into producing. Cause I got a producing job and I was like, I don't fucking know how to do this. Yeah. And then I was like, woo, I would do this and that. And then I was surprised I would do it. Surprise. I know, I know how to edit. Which is a lot of producing. I watch a lot of TV. Right. Fucking you know? love TV. Like, yeah, I know this is when that part comes in. Because right. that's what they do on reality shows. I fucking love, would you do a reality show? I think I might be. Really? It could be like, fun. I was on a couple episodes of one, but the, the sh- it's, it comes out May 5th. It's called Turdy Works. But here's the thing. Turdy Works? Turdy Works. May like 5th. Like turds? Yeah. Like poop? Poop. Moose poop. Cool. cool. It's about this woman who sells moose poop in Maine, but the reason the reality show was very comfortable, the showrunner on it was a nice guy. Yeah. So he wasn't making, and I, I got to see, I got to, I got to, I did, I could see the vibe of it a little bit before I did it mm-hmm. because the editing is where they get you with right. the reality show. So that's right. the thing. So you just want to be very careful of the editor. I mean, that's like, like our friend Hannah's on Summer House right, right now. And if you're on a Bravo show, you have to know that first season, you're going to get an amazing edit. Second season, they're going to turn you into a bitch. Why like, do they do that? Because that's, that's, the pro, that's the formula. Right. We can't keep liking someone for so long. Then they become like a beacon of goodness and rightness. Mm. And Bravo can't have that. Everyone has right. to be a little flawed and hated. Um, and then third season, they'll bring you back. Like, they just want to fuck with the audience's emotions. Yeah, the resurrection. But, it's, but then it's on you to like be like, okay, that was just an edit. And like, I'm not like a terrible person. Wouldn't now. that be tough to have a bunch of people think you're a bitch? Yeah, Hannah had like a really bad week like two weeks ago because I actually of, like, talked to her after an that. edit. Right, yeah. I was so surprised. I'm gonna, that's made me want to go watch the show kind of. I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but I, I have been asked to do two this year and I'm at the place where I feel like it's, I can use it because like I had been asked to do shows before and I was like, what would I be selling? You right. know, like, but now I feel like as Bell long as buckles. I ha- 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 have a Chiron that says comedian, Remy Casimir, or podcaster, Remy Casimir. People ask like, you to do a reality show before you were doing com- comedy or podcasting? Yeah. Interesting. When I you was just... doing the belt loop, <laughs> uh, I, was, I was asked to be on Made in Chelsea, which is a really, really good reality show about fancy sexy people in London and they were doing a season in New York and they needed fancy New York friends. Heard of it. And I'm fancy or my family is fancy. Bucks, and yeah. They thought the entrepreneurial thing was like, great. But then they said that I couldn't represent a brand. And I was like, well, if I can't be the mother Tucker, then I'm not doing this. So you were serious about it. Oh yeah. I'm serious about everything. I, I I'm, I'm like, I relate to that 100%. But if they wanted you to be a fucking entrepreneur, they had to let you be the mother, do the mother tucker in there. Right. If they wanted me to be like the, the business girl, but they didn't. They wanted right. like a New Yorker who's like, I went to private school too. Let me take you to my Hamptons house. Totally. <laughs> totally. I got a message from someone the other day that I went to elementary school with because I went to private school and I got kicked out. Nice. For what? Um, it was, so I went to the, so I went to a special school for like dyslexic kids. That was cool. a private school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of Wait, people in my mom grew up in Maine, right? Grew up in Maine. I went, but a lot of people in my mom's family went to a private school called Milton. Okay. And then, so I, but I grew up with my dad, but I was always exposed to that. And yeah. then I went to a private school for kids with learning disabilities. And then the idea mm-hmm. was I'd go to another private school after that. I got kicked out of that private school because I was, I'll say, I'll fast track it. In eighth grade, I had tried to kill myself, and then I went to this like rehab thing. I had this, all mm-hmm. this, all this like crazy home stuff, and then I went away to this summer program. And then this stepmom at the time made me stay at the school, and I didn't want to be there. 
Mm. So I kept trying to get myself kicked out. Because okay. I want, I miss my friends. Because I had, I was like, yeah, I don't want yeah, my yeah. last memory of home to be me trying to fucking kill myself, being yeah. in the rehab. So, you know, and I so love I how was, this is the story we're fast tracking. It's like yeah, really traumatic thing. We're just gonna get you to the fucking. And I and I I was like, I just don't want it to be. Then I married a man. Then I got pregnant. Then I was just fast track. Okay. I did have a boyfriend actually when I was at prep school. Crazy, Hamad. Jealous. I wish I had had a boyfriend. He's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. I had a hard time. All of my them. boyfriends, like from childhood, ended up gay. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I can't comment on his sexuality because he is from Kuwait, and I think that's mm-hmm. like a big thing. I'm sure he's straight though. Mm-hmm. Um, you, he's straight. Boyfriend, all your boyfriends ended up being gay. Yeah, and so did I. So okay. right, right, right. Yeah, it all <laughs> comes around. I had a did have my yeah. favorite boyfriend. I think did end up being gay, but it was my favorite because we would just like talk and then not hook up. I think that's what the thing is. Is like most gay people like in childhood will like date other gay people because you find, it's just you kinda like, find each other. This feels you, weird. Yeah, and then you, or I had a good friend Phil, and I remember I used to always be like, I don't want to hang out with my boyfriend. Can I say that I'm like I'd like hold hands with Phil? He was like my cover, but he was straight. He'd be like, I don't know why you fucking want to do this. But um, so but, I didn't want, I got kicked out of prep school because I yeah. wanted to get kicked out of prep school. Yeah. So I kept trying stuff and they were like, Emma, we know you want to leave. We're not going to kick you out. So I, I th- tried to throw myself down some stairs, but I didn't really, rem- I didn't really, I wanted uh-huh. to get kicked out. So I stood yeah. at the top of these stairs. It was so anticlimactic. And I was like, I want to get kicked out. So I just kind of like turned and did like a, a, a brisk walk down the stairs uh-huh. and then kind of bopped my body against the wall. And then I kind of lay there like, <laughs> and then the house manager or whatever the prep school dorm person was like yeah. what do you do and i was like i threw myself down the stairs and then i got in trouble and then i got kicked out nice but this kid sent me a message like you're covering up that you went to prep school and i was like first of all i went to a special ed prep school yeah 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 i'm not covering it up yeah i actually i know a bunch of comics in the city who are not mm. I know a bunch of comics in the city who went to prep school and most of them do lie. I know. That's why I was found, found it very refreshing that you brought it up. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's really part refreshing. of me. And it's also like, it's part of my sadness because I acknowledge that I've been given everything, you know, like that's, it's part of like why I'm like so pissed that I'm this way. All you can do is work to give back. That's where I think real happiness right. comes in. Not saying exactly. I do that very much. Exactly. Truly, truly need to get it together with that for me. No, but, but like everybody says like comics, like we make people like the world a better place. And like, even if we're doing it to get attention, like we're helping. All right. Yeah. So there's that. So we're doing that. Yeah. But it's refreshing. I think it's so important to be transparent about it mm-hmm. because then people are always like, when people are like, you hustle so hard, you do this. At? I had this roommate that said that years ago and I was like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do work really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the deal, though. I didn't have Mm -hmm. any student loans. Mm -hmm. She did. And she wanted to be an actress. And she, but then I was like, but then you got sick and you needed a job where you had health insurance and you needed Mm -hmm. to pay off those student loans. Can I say I would have pursued the creative arts if I had student loans? No. So I'm going to be upfront about that so people Uh don't feel bad. Same. Like I, yeah. so I really appreciate that you're open about that. Oh actually. no, I, I find there's so many like influencers that'll just be like, just work hard and do this. And also have a dad with a billion dollars <laughs> for right. your wardrobe, right. you know, like it's just not fair to give people those expectations, but like I'll have so many breakdowns. Like Ben started comedy when he was like 15 mm-hmm. and sometimes like, I'll be like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not successful yet. I can't do this. And he's like, chill. You've only been doing this for like five years or six years or however long it's been. He's like, I've been doing it for like 15. And I'm like, but I started with an easier playing field. Right. Like, you know, that game, or it's not even a game. It's a thing that they do for kids in gym class sometimes where it shows like your privilege. It's like, take a step forward if you have oh, yeah. a two parent home. I'm sure they take didn't do this in your gym class, but th- there's that video Never. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not an actual gym game. No, the people I grew up with are the most disconnected, right. airheaded. You don't have three other houses. Right, like, right, right. Right. But like- which is sad for them too, in a way, because it's, you're never going to experience the reality. Well, I guess any, everybody's reality is subjective too. It's funny that you say this too, because I got a message last night, very drunk from my ex-boyfriend. This guy, he's a friend of mine now, but I met him through my ex. And he wrote me, 
at, at 3 a.m. his time. He said, yo, I respect the fuck out of you. Just FYI, you have the best work ethic. I said, shut up. He said, for someone who could be some rich chick with no perspective, you're a fucking G. I mean it. That's awesome. That's great. And I was like, wow, thanks. I think it's really important for to seeing be me. Yeah. And I think it's really important to be transparent about it too, because it's, it's um, like there was someone asked Ali Wong how she managed everything in this New York Times article. And she was like, I have a nanny. Yeah. And so my I have, husband has money. Right. She's like, I have these things. And then also working really hard with that. And I was mm -hmm. like, that's good to hear because otherwise you've got some like YouTuber being like, well, I just wake up extra early and make sure I put rose water in my tea. And you're like, uh, mm -hmm. where am I falling short? Mm -hmm. Okay. So will you tell me about your first date? Do you remember your very first date? A and real date? This real date. But also I got a question. So in, so in high school, prep mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. were you dating in high school? Mm. Okay. So how old were you when you had like your first, was first such boyfriend? such a loser. I feel, okay. So I think I loser, have- Loser like, like nerdy, gothic? Not that those are losery things no, whatsoever. No, 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 Just like not enough confidence to go after what I wanted. You mean you were a high schooler? Person? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the um, yeah. If someone has a ton of confidence in high school, they're probably still hanging out in the high school parking lot. It's true. No, but it's it's not even like I was a loser. It's like I had a I had a weird gap in my like romantic and sexual progress. Ooh. Like I feel like when I was really young, I was like very openly. I was naked all the time. Like my my nickname for my family was nudist. Like I was scissoring with my girlfriends on sleepovers. What? I was like, yeah, like I was like really? six. Yeah, I had this one huh. friend. We would scissor on Saturday nights. And then on Sundays, we'd go test out churches with her family because they had just moved into the city. Remy can't have to spend the night on Saturday because it's scissor Saturday. What about Friday? No, no, that's we need Shabbat. Scissor. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, um, we got fuck each other Friday and scissor Saturday. Okay, Friday will work. Yeah. You guys would legit scissor? Well, like we weren't vagina, but vagina, but we were knee, both knees were in each other's vaginas. Which makes more sense than vagina to vagina, because let me tell you something. Because there's more friction. Exactly. And I've, yeah. anytime I've done that activity where it's like, but it's not through scissoring, it's always <laughs> all be like, on top and then move myself in like, a way for friction like, like that. Yeah. Like move your hip like this. That's like, a lot and, of coordination. And, like, and it's like a lot of like, like you just look like you're like waiting for someone to give you documents at work. Yeah, exactly. You know, like it's, the white girl on. waiting for the manager. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I feel like I was like really open. Like I would sit in like the mirror with my girlfriends and I'd go, I've got this part of my vagina. Do you have this part of your vagina? Like all that stuff. And then like, I had like a boyfriend uh, when I was Not doing ballet. Six. How old at, was that? At like four. Like, wow. Yeah, like at four, I remember I had, yeah, he was in my nursery school boyfriend, Michael, and he's yeah. gay. And <laughs> wow, they're gay going way back. Yeah. And um, like he would bring me flowers to my ballet recitals. Like I like, Damn. I like had a boy, I like had a husband, I had girlfriends. <laughs> and then the second like I hit puberty in like fourth grade, like I started to become like more like in, like just like ashamed of the like Your I got boobs, start going but I got boobs and then people were like oh Remy has boobs mm. and then I was like okay, were you the now? first girl with boobs in your class and friend group mm -hmm. yeah that's a big my that was my friend Margo was the first one that's a big thing because then people start yeah. looking at you different you get you probably started getting unwanted attention yeah yeah and, and also wanted attention but then it right. becomes like okay this is your value because you're the girl with the body or whatever and I don't know. I just, and then I started wondering and worrying about what other people were thinking about me and saying. And anytime I'd hear a rumor about like, oh, I hooked up with that girl. Her nipples are weird. Oh, mm. I, and then in, in high school, I went down on this girl and there was toilet paper in her vagina. And I was like, well, I'm never going to have anyone go down on me. If this is what happens when you have sex right. right, or like date someone or like let right. someone in, like I'm not doing that. So I truly, I like, went from being like a makeout slut in seventh grade to just like closing it up and being the last person still a virgin in 10th grade. 10th grade, which is still pretty young. Which is still really early, but for New York, it was like, like I would get made fun of. And like- See, New York prep school kids are fucking, more people were having, when I was at the prep school, more people were having sex 
at that when they would leave for the weekends than when I was back at the public school. Yeah. Preps, those prep school kids are fucking each other's brains out on cocaine. And they're on prep and they're ready. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. They've got the access to it. 10th no. grade is really young. It's really young. Um, and so I think that was when I ended up having like my first real date. 10th grade. Because I, uh, I really wanted to lose my virginity because I was getting made fun of. And By female friends or male friends? Mostly male. But yeah, like, right. But the females would be like, yeah, just do it. It's like not a huh. big deal. Um, and one of the male friends was the guy I ended up losing it to. And like, yeah, like literally if you made fun of me in high school, I'd be like, I'm going to hook up with you and right. change your mind. Um, Which works. It must have been a, it an interesting day for him when that tactic stopped working. When he was like, you want to have sex with me, you fucking loser. And they're like, you're arrested. Like this oh my will God. work. Oh my God. He must be very confused now because I had sex with him for years after wow. that. Because I also was, I didn't want to increase my number. I didn't want to be a slut. So I was like, oh, I'll just keep going bad to that bad dick. Right. So I don't like, <laughs> you know, like change any, whatever. So the date was, I, it was the first day of spring break. Ooh. And I really wanted to, um, fuck because mm. I was like I might fuck somebody on vacation like I feel like that could happen for me like I, I was always really into like vacation hookups because they can't follow you home they can't ah. tell anybody about anything um, was that like a not wanting intimacy or was that oh that was not wanting gossip not wanting that gossip. Makes sense. Totally, yeah. totally 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 yeah um and so I was like I might hook up with somebody uh but I should do it with somebody who knows me just so that like I have that story for me that I'm not like losing respect for myself, which is so dumb. Like you could fuck anybody. Like virginity sucks. The idea of being like my first time, like needing to be something perfect and special is just so dumb. But it also is a better narrative than if you were like, my first time is going to be fucking, well, maybe it's not. Maybe if you think, oh, it's going to be brutal, then you, it manages your expectations more, but wanting it to be with someone, you know, is a more comfortable, you want to be comfortable at least. Sure. You yeah. Know? But like my friend lost her virginity to like when she was like a junior in college to this random Australian we met at a bar and she was like, that was the best way I could have done it. Right. Just get it out. Just do it. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was like, oh, I'm going to come over and watch the OC because it was a <laughs> Thursday and that's what you did. And so I went over and I was like, do you want to have sex? Like, as we were, like, watching it, and he's like, what? Were you guys even, like, like, sitting near each other? Yeah, and we'd been, like, making out for, okay. like, probably two years. And, like, Did you like been, this guy? Yeah, like, we yeah. were friends, and also, like, he was the best-looking non-Jew at my school. And was I've it... always been really into non-Jews. Hmm. Um, so I was like, yeah, let's fuck. And he was like, what? Like, you've never even touched my dick. Well, like, I'm about I, to. I've never even fingered you. And I'm like, I know. Let's fucking like, do it. But like, I want to do it. So we used a condom from health class given to our, us by our um, gym coach, Coach P. Shout out to her. Shout out to Coach P. And I told her this story recently because she like reached out to me and I was like, Coach P, I talk about you a lot. Yeah, because thanks um, for that fucking condom, by the way. Yeah. And she gave us this like little yellow condom, or she gave it to me and he was in my class and we were right. like, like, and uh yeah i tried to put it on tried to fuck it hurt real bad i pushed right. him out mm. was and it his then, first time no he'd been fucking for years ah, he'd been um, getting those coach p condoms yeah and then it didn't work and then three months later i was like okay i want to try this again but i want to go on a date this time because <laughs> i've never been on a date and i think that would really like warm me up and Aww. like would just make me feel better about the whole thing he's like you don't want to date me and he was like okay we'll go on a date so we went to haru uh the japanese restaurant and i had a lychee martini oh wow they served then, you guys your uh -huh. fake ids you did yeah fucking prep school kids and the fake ids mm -hmm. yep and then we went back to his place and we got it in for real for the first time. Woo! Do you remember the date? Like, did you guys, were you, were you guys like acting grown up? You get all dressed up and stuff? 
Uh, we were acting grown up because that's what you do as a New York child. Right. Did he pay for the date? Yes. Okay. Leachy yeah. Martini paid for the date. Get yeah. it in. Thank you for yeah. sharing that with me. I yeah, that was that. my first. And honestly, I think it's like one of the only ones where like the guy has paid. Really? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I used to think it was a bad thing because I had low self-esteem, but now I'm like, I'm a feminist. Right. It's a tricky thing is what it fucking is because yeah. everyone likes to be taken out on a date, but you know, I always, I'm like, no, the man one has to pay on the date. The man one. Yeah. Yeah. I and truth be told, mm. I'm usually the man one. Even if they have a penis, I'm really? the man one. Look at what? my jaw. <laughs> <laughs> you have a really nice jaw, but women ones often think they're the man ones. Mm -hmm. That's a very common trait. They go, I'm the man one. And they go, actually, you're, I think it's confusing um, being like a boss and being mm -hmm. motivated with, ma with being a man, which isn't what it is. Or confusing the fact that Ben has less body hair than me. I don't know. It's all very, and gender is very socially constructed. So it's very like, it's a tricky, yeah. it's a tricky thing. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on oh, the show. Thank you for having me. Of course. Where can people find you? Please come find me on the find internet because it. it's on not the internet find only. me in real life. Yeah. Uh, you can't, she cannot be found now. But I truly live on the internet. Uh, you can follow me at Remy Casimir. My podcast is How Come, um, spelled C-U-M, because I am a 12-year-old boy. And uh, it's on Instagram at How Come Podcast. It's on all of the players. Uh, if you like live Instagram comedy, or if you don't, and you just want to see a train wreck potentially happen, go to Remy's Comedy Club. Uh, we have shows Wednesdays and Saturdays at 9 p.m. And if you want some of that sweet merch we were talking about, howcomepodcast.com for don't get a vagina scar on your leg. And be on the lookout for, what are the belt things called? Oh, the tuck. The tuck. If you type the tuck official commercial tuck. into YouTube, I think it'll come up. Or the tuck Remy Casimir. Because <laughs> isn't it's, the tuck, isn't the tuck when, when people put their penis in their When you have a boner butt? up, yeah. Oh, tucking for drag queens yeah. is putting your penis in your own butt. But tucking for if you just have like a boner, you tuck it up into your waistband to hide it from your teacher. So you can find that kind of tuck, that kind of tuck, mm -hmm. and then Remy's tuck. Mm -hmm. well, thank you so much, Remy. I appreciate it. Thank you, Emma. You're the best. Okay, guys, that was my episode with Remy. And uh, just to, like playing a little Danity Kane in the background because what better way to end a fun conversation? Fun con. Oh my god, I almost just a conversation. Fun conversation. You know, I love this song. I forget if I said this here before, but I listened to this song so much one time my friend, my old roommate, asked me if it was sexual. But yeah, I have told you guys that before. And yeah, fucking it was. Okay. All right, guys, that was another episode of Emma's Bunker. Please uh, go check out Remy, uh, her podcast, How Come Comedy Club. She gave all the plugs at the end of it. Thank you for being here. Email me, emmasbunker at gmail.com. For any audio photography needs, go to Chris, Chris Thomas at christhomasphotography.com and yeah let me know what you're up to hang in there also check this out i'm gonna go research the history of marshmallows and and then i'm gonna fucking talk about it okay let me know what you want me to look into too i'm around <laughs>